So today we have um, a sample interactive presentation done in Keynote. Um, so I'll demonstrate the tools and how to create this um, interactive presentation, a few tips and tricks along the way, and we'll end with a wish list, what I would like the, so if anyone from Apple is watching this, this is my wish list, I would like you to um, change about or add some features into the keynote presentation. Um, so we're going to go through the presentation. Um, the sample presentation I'm showing you, actually, I've done um, to prepare the students to play a game called 13 Skull. Now this is a big fish game and it's a free online, a free app that they can download. Just be careful when you're downloading the app. There's two versions, a paid version and a free version. The students only need the free version and we'll bring them through um, the first chapter. And then if they really like it, they can go on and, and pay for the upgrade and pay for all the chapters. But for as an English teacher, um, in the classroom I just use the first um, chapter. It is focusing on English, but again, any subject can use the same techniques that I am using now. So if you're teaching engineering, you can use it for engineering, for health sciences, for math especially. Um, all of the things are the same. Uh, basically, I'm just, I'm an English teacher, so I'm presenting with my English knowledge. Um, if you are an English teacher as well and you want the full presentation, I can send that out to you at the end of this webinar. Just send me a quick email and I'll make sure I send that out to you. So if you have that presentation, let's get started. The password is sample, and I'm just gonna put that into the chat room so that everybody knows. So if anybody comes in late, they can see that there. So you should be able to see on your iPad. Okay, if you tap on it, you'll see that lock symbol, and you just tap in sample and done and it will open up the presentation for you. So if it doesn't open up into the first slide, just scroll up and into the first slide. So we are in um, what is called the editing mode or the edit mode of Keynote app. And that's the, where I want the students to say, stay until I tell them to go into the presentation mode. So if you tap on the first or the second slide, you'll see complete the activities below in the 13 Skull Introduction Quizlet page. You can see that the 13 Skull Introduction is underlined and it, I've put it into a different color. That's because it is a hyperlink or an interactive link and it will bring them to a website. So if they tap on that, they'll get the option to either copy or open. And I just ask them to open and it brings them into the Quizlet site that I want them to work with. My view is I like to save as much time in the classroom as possible. I don't like to put um, web pages on the, the board for the students to copy. If I'm already giving them a pages document or a keynote presentation, I will put the links that I need them to go to in, in those um, presentations or, page, or files. Um, just because the second that you try to get your students to go out and go to something else, we all know what happens. So one-stop shop is my philosophy. So here, if you haven't used Quizlet, um, I do recommend looking at it. It's actually quite easy to set up and use. And I ask the students to complete, you know, learn the vocabulary through flashcards, through the speller. Um, they can then play the games of scatter and space race if they'd like. And there's just some 10 simple words that they need to do before they watch the introductory video. Um, then when we go back and I've given them a time limit, usually about 15, 20 minutes to do that. Um, then we go back and we say, okay, we're going to watch the video and how much did you understand? So they have the vocabulary to prepare for the video and now they're going to watch the video. After they watch the video, they're going to go to the next slide and they're going to move the sentences to the top if true or the bottom if false. So if you tap on that slide, you'll see that you have the sentences and the students just tap and move the sentences as they need to. So the pirate captain crown is still alive. Uh, we're gonna move that to false, maybe move this one over. So you can see that it's quite easy just to tap and move things around. Now, if you try to tap true and move it, you'll notice that it's locked, okay? Also, if you try to map, move the picture in the background, it's locked. This is a feature of Keynote app that is not available in PowerPoint. So one of the great things, you can lock items. So you can lock the instructions, you can lock the background photos, so that really the only thing that the students can move on the page is what you want them to move. As well, you'll see these little yellow um, squares, and that's just the comments, and I put the comments either to give them some hints or trick or help with certain things, 
or um, to remind them of the instructions. So here I'm reminding them, move the sentence to the bottom of true or, the, or top of true, bottom if false. Um, here I've given them a little bit of help with the vocabulary, agreed equals said yes to a request, or here you can view treasure equals gold, jewels, and silver. So it's just a good way. Great thing about the Keynote app, these comments stay with the object. So when you move it, it moves with the, com with, moves with the object. However, in PowerPoint, the comments do not stay with the objects. So this is a benefit. And why you wanna add the comments in the Keynote app, not in your PowerPoint um, slide, okay? So if we move on, we're just going to prepare to play the game. Um, and these are things I want them to do a prediction. So I want them to just decide what's going to come first and second and third in the game. So here they have um, different items. Actually, sorry, I'm just going to move that down so it's original. So it looks like this. Now, if you notice, the first one again is locked. They can't move it because that is number one. So that's the answer to number one. And the other ones they can move. Again, they have the little comments to help them out and give them some hints along the way. But it's fairly, it's about the same thing. It's just movement of objects. On the next slide, we also have some vocabulary that they're preparing for. Um, and they have these circles that they need to then move over top of the vocabulary that's in the list on the bottom. So if they see broccoli, they have to find the broccoli in the picture and move that. Now the students can do this as homework, they can do it in the class, and they can do it with partners. A great way is actually getting the students with one iPad with the keynote, and then having another student using another iPad and doing the, um, checking the vocabulary in the, in the dictionary on their iPad. So this is a great way to have them work together to solve the, the puzzle. Um, this is an, another thing. This is where um, I want the students to actually tap play and go into the play mode. So if the students tap play, they go into this and they just swipe. Now it's a little bit different because I actually want them to tap on different items into the screen. So tap on the broccoli. So if the student looks and they say, okay, I'm gonna tap on the magnet, what happens? Sorry, but that's incorrect, try again. They tap again and it will bring them back to the, the same place. Now if they tap on the broccoli, they get it done, well done, that's correct. Next question. Now if you see, the next slide, I say tap on the cake. You cannot see the interactive objects. They've, I've hidden them. I've changed the opacity from 15% to zero. So if you go back to this slide, it's 15%. So they can, it's a little bit of a hint for them. So if it is difficult vocabulary, at least they're, they're getting a bit of a hint. If you want to make it more challenging, you can take the opacity off and um, have them do it this way. So tap on the cake. The cake is there. And, oh, well done, that's correct, and they go back. So now I've given them the um, instructions to pinch to exit the play mode. So they just pinch it to go out of the play mode and back into the regular mode. And just a few other activities where they just need to move, you know, English teachers, we all know these activities. So some believe the ma mansion is cursed so they can tap on and move the vocabulary. Um, I, again, I've tapped and locked the sentences so they cannot move that. They can just move the words underneath the sentences into the correct place. And they can always move them back afterwards as well. So in this one, it's a similar thing, except now I'm actually asking them to use the vocabulary words. So here I've started an example of a sentence and they just tap in and they can write their sentence in the sentences that I've provided. So I'm just giving them the space to write their sentences. There is treasure in the cave. Okay. Um, this is just an example again, um, a sample of the presentation. There is a more comprehensive um, presentation for the students to do. So if you're interested in that, just send me an email and I'll send it out to you. And finally, here's the end. There's one more interactive link that you can add to your presentations, and that is the mail link. So to add a link, actually, you just tap on to the object that you want to add a link to, tap on tools at the top, tap on present tools, and presentation tools, sorry, and interactive links is there. And when you tap on interactive links, you have your options. So for that, when I'm putting it into play mode, they're going to different slides, I'm using the slide option. Then 
we have the web page open option where they can open up a web page or you have the mail option. And for this one, I've actually put in um, a box email address. So I'm using box cloud service and I want the students to send me their completed presentation, but I don't want them sending it to me in my email because it's way too much information. Again, I'm a one stop shop type of teacher. So I don't want them to try to write down this, this new email address that they don't know. Instead, when they open up this, they'll get their email address, they can just copy it, paste it into the, the email that they're then going to send me by tapping share and send a copy. Okay, so just a, another way to make it life a little bit easier. So if we look at um, how I built it, a few little options, things to keep in mind. Um, I always build these on Key, I use Keynote in my MacBook first, um, but you can do them in PowerPoint as well. But I do recommend setting them up initially on your computer because it's much easier to work with and, and the keyboard's easier to work with as well. But um, you do want to double check the presentation and all formatting on the iPad. As well, there are some things like locking the objects which are not available in PowerPoint and you cannot do that on your computer. You're going to have to do that in, in the iPad. So just important to do that. Um, when you're transferring over. I do password protect as you saw. Um, I do this as a classroom management tool. Um, large files take time to load and sometimes I'll send out the file to the students and ask them to download it outside of class and come prepared. Hopefully they do and when they come into class prepared, I just I have the password ready to open up the content that I want them to see at that time. It also allows you to break up the presentation to smaller chunks. So if you wanted to break up that um, presentation part where they actually have to tap play and do the quiz, you can put that into a different presentation and still keep control of the class. Um, and it also kind of creates a quiz-like atmosphere when you give them the password and they're ready. Um, the interactive links, I showed you how to do those. Um, one of the things that I've learned is to make sure that you add a different font color for the web links or the students don't realize that it is a web link. It does automatically underline um, the link, but it's better to put them in a different font so the students get used to seeing that and um, they know to tap on it to open up the web link. Also, a good idea is to add all the links to other slides last. Set up your whole presentation, do everything that you need to do, and then set up those links to the slides. Um, doing those in the middle or at the beginning uh, it just means you're going to have to change it. Sometimes if you move the slides around, they'll delete the, the link, so best to leave that for last. Um, I do create template slides um, and just simply change the content. It makes workflow a little bit faster. Also make sure that your shapes, anything that you want the students to move on the screen, make sure it's a fingerprint size or bigger. Um, I didn't do that initially, and what happened was the students would end up doing this so when they're when it's little they would miss miss not moving so i've realized if it's a fingerprint size and they just tap on it and move it's much easier for them to navigate as well opacity if you want a little bit more challenge for your students putting it at to zero um, is more challenged um, and you'd simply do this by tapping on the style and style again and style options and when you're in that you'll have the option to decrease the opacity so you'll see now the opacity on that circle has been decreased. It will also help stop cheating. So for example, if the students are in here doing their activity, they can't go down here and check. Unless they tap on something and they know how to do um, the, the, not the transition build, sorry. If they know how to do the uh, presentation tools, the interlinks, that's the only way. And they'll have to keep that open and they won't be able to go back to, you know when they go back and change then they have to go back and it's so it's a little way to help hide the the answers to the quiz but again you can always split it up into a different um, presentation as well um, lock objects uh, locking objects is quite easy and again remember that this is not available in PowerPoint only in keynote but you just tap on I'm just going to tap done tap on the object you want to lock tap on the style tap on arrange and tap lock. Now when an object is locked, it's very easy to unlock it. If you just tap on the object again, you'll get the, comp the ability to unlock it. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut for locking it. 
you have to go into the style editor. So that's one of my wish lists that I wish there was a lock here so that I could just tap and lock instead of tap, tap. But once you start locking things, it will remember once you go into the style and it'll be on that, that page that you need. So basically I lock instructions, I lock background images, uh, I lock correct answers or hints or clues. Just be careful, um, if you're using the interactive hyperlinks, um, don't lock this. So for example, this page here, don't lock it because once you lock it, the interactive hyperlink doesn't work anymore. So it won't be, the students won't be able to go to that website. Okay. Comments are another great thing to use. Um, as you saw, I put them there to remind the students of the instructions, to give definitions of new vocabulary, or to give hints along the way. Um, great that they stay with the object that you add them into, um, and they move with the object. So that's really um, great for us. Uh, another thing that I mentioned, and I'll mention again, is the pair or small groups, pairs or small groups. So having two or three students working together on the same iPad to collaborate and work on the puzzle together. Also, I've had students um, in groups and small groups create their own presentation. Similarly, after they've done this, they can then, even for level four, um, level four IELTS reading practice, they can go through and decide what are the most important vocabulary words that they need to learn. Um, and then they can create questions like true, false, or not given, and they can create their own presentation. They tend to get a little bit more excited and involved about an IELTS reading when there's a little bit of a game element or a testing their each other's, you know, so they have to test their friends on their knowledge rather than just simply going through working through the IELTS um, question and answer scenario. My wish list, not so many, but I have a few. One is real-time collaboration. I think this is the one thing that's really missing from Keynote app right now. You know, when you're using the Keynote on Mac or PC through iCloud.com, you can interact and collaborate on a single Keynote um, presentation at the same time. This is not available on the app yet, but if I have the the keynote presentation on my Mac and I have the same one on my iPad, I can collaborate, but you have to have the same Apple ID. So for our students, I want our students to collaborate with each other. So it'd be great if they were playing a game like this and they were both collaborating and moving objects on their own iPads. Unfortunately, not available yet, but I'm hoping in the near future it will be. Um, as well, it's not compatible with uh, Google presentations or PowerPoint. Google presentations doesn't allow you to move the objects or even lock or have any of the interactivity. And PowerPoint um, or the Microsoft 365 requires a paid subscription and it's about $100 a year. So, and again, PowerPoint doesn't allow the locking of the objects, so, uh, which is a feature that I really like for our students. So a few little wish lists is I wish it was more compatible with other apps and I wish that there was real-time collaboration. I also wish in the app that there was multiple object editing. You can do this in um, PowerPoint and in Keynote on your computer, but not in the app. So you have to do this individually for each object. That's why I do recommend if you do have a MacBook to do it on a Keynote, um, Keynote app on the MacBook first and then transfer it or do it on PowerPoint put as many transitions as you can and then just lock the objects in the Keynote app afterwards. So multiple ed object editing saves time and I wish it was available on the iPad. Uh, the last thing that's on my wish list is the presenter notes. Um, you know, when you're using PowerPoint or Keynote, the presenter notes are very clean and neat at the very bottom of your screen, not so in the Keynote app. It actually is clunky. It causes complications. I'll never do it again. The students can't find where they are. Um, and then it covers the whole page. So the students lose the visual of what they're supposed to do while they try to read. So it doesn't work. That's where I use um, the comments as a workaround for this. So I use comments to give them instructions, but I don't use the, the presenter's notes anymore. But I wish it was something similar because it's nice to have that at the very bottom, as you can see in my example here from the Keynote app on my computer. Okay, and that, so that's only three little wish list things, which is not too much actually. Um, so I'm going to end it there and I'm going to thank you and see if there's any questions.